I'm Alex Paul, and I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Talking Time Pieces, where we talk about watch collecting and horology. Today, we're going to do an episode on a watch that we've talked about often in other videos, but never really had its own show, and uh, that's this funky, cute, Sorna sports watch uh, kind of world timer. And uh, let's take a close-up look at it and see... Uh, what it does and how it works. And um, please, please remember to subscribe. It's very important to the channel. Tell your friends as well. Uh, so let's turn the camera around and take a close-up look at this watch. Here we have the uh, Sorna GMT World Timer uh, sports watch. It really is a perfect example of the best and the worst of these um, watch companies that were uh, caught out by the quartz crisis. Sorna, the name has actually changed hands a couple of times over the years, but at the time this was made, Sorna would take uh, off-the-shelf movements and add their own uh, modules to them, or well, they probably ordered the modules from someone else. But um, essentially, we've got here a uh, triple date, kind of world timer, kind of sports watch. And uh, they even had some tie-ins with uh, sports uh, people at one point, I understand. Let's um, zoom out real quick again for, let's do a really quick uh, crystal check. Yeah, it's a mineral crystal, not sapphire. Better than glass, but, well, you know. Put that down. And so, yeah, one of the nice things about this watch, though, is it's really pretty face. I mean, that blue, that sunray blue is just gorgeous. And the uh, bezel um, functionality, as it were, actually compliments it uh, and the designer who did this face really used the color well and uh, put the red highlights in the dial and in um, the uh, day of the week sub dial and to highlight the um, month dial and uh, it really is an interesting presentation of functionality you know because um, you turn the uh, top dial and that changes your uh, world time functionality. So it does actually perform as a world timer. It's just like an old school world timer. You had to do your own uh, calculations by spinning the dial to the city uh, where you were in and then track around to the city that you wanted to know the time of and then see that. Now the uh, other bezel is a timing bezel. So this has both the world time functionality and timing bezel functionality with some uh, interesting presentation of knobs and pushers. Interestingly enough, these pushers do not actually uh, do anything with the watch as far as functionality goes. They're for setting. See, so this one changes the uh, day of the week um, subdial. And uh, this pusher changes the month subdial. Uh, you have to change the date by doing the uh, scrolling through the days. So on the days that I decide to wear it, I usually decide because it's the date closest to the one that's on the uh, dial. <laughs> or if I wear it on a day where it's really not lined up, sometimes I'll just forego the date and just set the time and um, move on. But it really is a charming, charming piece. Uh, 21 Jewels. It's not a shabby uh, device, and the case design is very, very eccentric. And I love the uh, beautiful brushing on the case. Uh, I was lucky to get a new old stock, uh, so it really was an uh, unblemished case when I got it, and I've been trying to keep it that way. Now, you know, busy bezels are not unusual, you know, wristwatch check. I'm wearing my uh, Breitling Navitimer, which has a notoriously busy bezel, but then again, it is a slide rule. Um, I have a whole video on how the slide rule works and um, other things about the watch, but it's a great piece. And uh, 
This is a true GMT. Well, it, you can adjust the GMT hand separately, but it does not have a flying hour hand. But it does have GMT functionality in that I can set the uh, GMT hand separately from the hour hand. It's just that the hour hand is not a flying hour hand like in the uh, Omega Seamaster uh, GMT or the uh, Rolex uh, Explorer 2 or the GMT Master. They all have uh, flying hour hands. You can you know, pull the crown out to the first stop and jump the hour without hacking the movement. So, um, let's, let's look a little bit more closely at this. I, uh, first, let's take a look at it on the wrist real quick. It really is a charming piece, and it has a lot of wrist presence and a lot of character. You know, this is the kind of watch I would wear if I'm going watch shopping, because no, how, no matter how snobby you are, you can't really give a cool, funky, uh, vintage piece the, you know, the side eye, because... The, arguably this represents why we collect watches it's interesting it has uh interesting presentation it looks good it has nice wrist presence um it works it's a functional watch tells you the it's a triple date tells you the month the day of the week and the day it also lets you time things kind of and uh does have world time functionality so this is actually an all-in-one full package watch if you look at it from that point of view. Now, um, let's take out the calipers and do some quick uh, measurements. All right, so this is kind of a 42 and a half because the way that the case bulges, I mean, at the, at the, at the large sides, you've, you're running about a 45, 46, you see, and um, it has shrouded lugs. So at least it's got a very, very slim presentation. It's only 42.6 lug to lug. So that's why it sits so nicely on the wrist, even though it is a big baby here. Um, 13.5. Now I've got the back uh, already pre-slightly unscrewed, so I probably picked up a half a millimeter there. So it's probably a 13 mil thick, which considering you know how busy it is, isn't very thick at all and considering the chunky case it really does um speak well for how it sits on the wrist this is not the factory bracelet by the way this is just an aftermarket three link that is reminiscent of a certain companies that i won't mention now um let's open up the back there we go we got it off we got it off okay let's see here what do we have here but uh, it still is a nice case back and automatic movement decent decoration for you know a relatively inexpensive uh, mainstream piece plastic spacer but you know like I said they weren't expecting to uh, go up for the um, Geneva seal. But a decent looking watch. Good functionality, nice presentation. If you have the gaskets checked, it's supposed to be good to five atmospheres. So you could at least wash your hands while wearing it without freaking out. And in general, um, just a nice piece. There we go. Clean it up and get like a last zoom in. And so, yeah, that was the Sorna GMT sports watch triple date. Like I said, everything cool and everything weird about the um, 70s and 80s. Thanks for watching. Let's turn the camera around and close out the show. So, that was the uh, Sorna sports watch. A really cool and funky piece and, you know, a nice uh, thing to have in your collection and a perfect example of a fun vintage watch that doesn't cost a lot of money. Thanks for watching and uh, please remember to subscribe. Mm -hmm.